Today in the news, we find a new APU, we got see-through phones, and I answer a question. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me just give a huge thanks to our sponsor, Memory Express. They're our day one sponsor, they're based here in Canada and offer a complete price beat guarantee, not to mention their stores, which are a great place to try out all of the newest peripherals before you buy them. Check their online shop down below in the description. Let's get started with AMD. Back in January, there was an APU by the codename Gonzalo that was discovered by Tum Apisac. The embedded SOC reference code suggested specs for a gaming part, like something for a console. Tum also suggested that the last part of that code was an indication of what graphics this APU would have. In this case, he pointed at Navi 10 Lite graphics clocked at 1 GHz. For the CPU, it would be an 8 core at 1.6 GHz base clock with a 3.2 GHz boost. The last thing I want to point out is that when decoded, the two at the start of that code suggest that this APU was still in prototyping phase. Well, just yesterday, another Gonzalo APU was spotted. The tweet posted once again by Mr. Apisac gave us a different code, this time with the first character being a Z, which usually means that the APU is in qualification, sort of the last stage before increased steppings. The main problem here is that the current decoder doesn't completely cover this new APU, but according to Tom Apisac, the CPU should be an 8 core, have a base clock of 1.6 GHz, and if we look at the decoder, still carry a variant of now. Navi 10 Lite. This time though, the Navi graphics would be clocked at 1.8 GHz. If we mix and match the two Gonzalos, we would get an 8 core processor clocked at 1.6 GHz base with a possible 3.2 GHz boost with Navi graphics at 1.8 GHz. So what gives? Well, let's compare this mystery CPU to a current Xbox One X. Clearly, the architecture of both the CPU and GPU are bound to be completely different. But just looking at the clock speeds, we can see a pretty great boost from 2.13 GHz for the Xbox One X to 3.2 GHz for that Gonzalo APU. This APU is probably for the next generation console, and the switch from Polaris to Navi will definitely be a welcome change. The only thing I'm kind of unsure about is for which console this could be. Sony has a very deep relationship with AMD when it comes to Navi. Some say that Navi was built for the PS5. So will we see two completely different SOCs for the next gen consoles, or will Microsoft just have to fork up the cash to use the same design? Let me know what you think down below. Moving on, apparently LG isn't really done with the gimmicks. After what I think is an atrocious attempt at making something special with the G8, LG just patented a transparent foldable phone. That was found by the patent hunters at Let's Go Digital, it's always them, and the device portrayed shows a phone with a transparent side and a chunk on the right being opaque, presumably to house most of the physical components. Now I don't think that this will happen anytime soon, it's just a patent. But LG has been working hard on transparent displays and flexible OLEDs. This kind of reminds me of that Taiwanese company called uh, Polytron, I think, that said that they would make a transparent smartphone by 2013. That was like back in 2011. The prototype was clearly non-functioning with just a slice of hollow paper in the middle of plastic or glass. I mean, look at it. What is the, what is this? What is the SD card connected to? Sure, it was a prototype, but shouldn't prototype at least demonstrate working technology? Then we have Intel with a new twist on their products. Yesterday, they revealed the Optane H10, which is basically an SSD with 3D crosspoint memory glued onto it. Honestly, it sounds like a great idea, as great as Optane sounded when they first released their accelerator modules, but this time, you can't buy it. Well, you can, but it's only for pre-built systems. If you want more info on how it works, you can click right here to see the latest Hardware Connects video where they explain the H10. It's actually right here. Yeah, it's gonna be right here. Not over there, right here. All right, so now I'm going to try that new segment that I talked about a few weeks ago. I'm gonna call it Boot Sector, Boot Partition. If you have any ideas for a name, please just leave it down in the comments. Anyways, the question is, do gamers care about power consumption slash efficiency of GPUs and CPUs? In this segment, by the way, I only give my personal opinion. So keep that in mind when you guys post your questions. So do I care? 
Me? No. The total efficiency of a system will really only make a difference in certain use cases. In my case, even if I had a GPU that consumed 400 watts and a CPU at, I don't know, 200 watts when at max load, it wouldn't really make any difference because they are never really at those extremes except for when I, let's say, render videos, which usually lasts a maximum of half an hour. Editing puts my CPU at maybe 40-50% load and the GPU at around the same and it's only like that for a few hours. Unless you game 16 hours a day or run a rendering farm or forget that your benchmarks are running for a year, efficiency will likely not be too much of a factor. Plus, electricity is pretty cheap in Quebec. Anyways guys, that concludes it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll put them in the boot sector section. I'm not sure. Find the name and give it to me. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, I forgot. Whew.